Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tunji Ofei Show. Uh, today I've got a very special guest. He's also my nephew, interestingly, and not every day you're privileged to have your nephew in the same trade as yourself. I'm also, he's really doing fine for himself. That one is so proud to bring him on the show on his own merit, not because he's family or anything like that. So yeah, Shaya Banks, uh, welcome on the Tunji Ofei Show. How do you feel today? Thank you for having me. I feel so good. It's a big privilege. And, you know, watching my uncle, you know, do do the same thing that we do every day. It's also a big privilege to, you know, be here and watch you do what you do. Thank you for having me. It's all right. So is it fair to say we like the, the songs in the Cameroonian team? You've got the uh, Alex <laughs> song and the big song. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I know, right? I mean, it's fair to say that we 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 yeah. are we are famous for what we do. So, Rigo I mean, song is the uncle. So I'm like Rigo song. You like Alex? <laughs> Alex is, that, that yeah. is, that is a valid statement. Okay, good, good, good. That's a nice uh, icebreaker. So let's uh, get into the nitty gritty of today's show. So Shaya Banks, uh, I think Shaya Ogunsoya for real name. Fair enough. Okay, yes. many people don't know that, but. Let's stick with the nickname that is selling the product now, Cheye <laughs> Banks. So do you ever dream that you one day be, uh, be an uh, on-air personality? Well, I mean, for the longest time, it's it's not been, that's not been my dream. Um, I really just wanted to be in charge of events. I, I, I started off doing events. I was doing artist management when I was in school. I was doing... Um, I was doing ushering jobs. I was doing so many other things. I used to, you know, organize shows. That was that was pretty much how it started for me. And um, all of a sudden, my interest grew when I started managing an artist. And then I found out that I could just because I've always loved music. I found that I found out that I could promote his music if I could work on the radio. So radio was just like a means to an end in the beginning, and eventually it became a passion. You know, I was angry at first because we, it was tough trying to promote an artist on Nigerian radio. And, you know, n- nobody would really want to support you without sharing the potential first. So I was, the, the only way I thought I could do it was getting my foot in the door. And then if I was in there, it would be easier for me to promote. So that's how I got in there. I fell in love with radio after that. And since then, it's been no looking back. Wow. That's an amazing story. Uh, for this, for those who probably don't know, they want to ask, who is this artist? I'm sure he's got it in here. Oh yeah, his name is Chris Rio. Um, he, I think he still makes music, but but passively. He he lives in Canada. He's married. Um, you know, he was on The Voice, a competition called The Voice Nigeria, oh. and amazing talent. You know, and it's been an amazing journey for for how we've both grown and. You know, thankful for where we are right now. Yeah. So let's just say he's moving to something different aside from yeah. entertainment. Why are you still keeping it locked, keeping it real in what you believe in? Which is yes. uh, once again commendable. But as another yeah. angle I've been thinking about, how does this guy do it? From mathematics, yeah, if I'm right, to uh, communication. Not many people are that gifted. Like some of us are probably, uh, maybe I struggle to get my credit. <laughs> I did get in mathematics for a while. So when you have like, is that always like the skills are never balanced? So is it that you're very too good in English and you could speak, you could do this, you could that, but your mathematics will be a bit, a bit low. And some people even have it worse than some of us and it's so low. But in your case, it seems to be on, you know, on a balance. How did you do that? <laughs> um, to be honest, when I was in secondary school, my math was was very great. And that was one of the, you know, the boosters, one of the motivations for me to even study mathematics in the university because I thought I was really good at math. But mm-hmm. when I got to university, the story changed, man. And you know, I started, I was, I was struggling academically. I wasn't, I wasn't the, I wasn't the worst student, but I wasn't the best student, you know. So I was just, I was there. I was like an average student, and um, for me everything just came 
at the right time. I'll, I'll say it's divinely orchestrated, you know, like even as at the time, because I was always just so sure, I needed, I, I used to talk to a lot of people and people were telling me, ah, bro, you have, you know how to communicate, you know how to socialize. So I think my, my articulation and my vocabulary started to grow and they started to build when I started communicating with people more in university. So for me, I didn't, I didn't even, the English part, I, till tomorrow, I don't speak big English. I don't speak normal English. But for me, um, I feel like every, everything and everything that I've become has, be, has been based on divine orchestration. It's not like I planned something or I, it just happened. And I feel like that's how math, English, <laughs> I feel like they are different. It's all good. Yeah. And I would even say, in a way, mathematics helps me become you know, witty, it helps me become strategic. Like when you put one and two together, it helps you connect the dots and make you say things in a way that a regular person will not say them on the radio, you know? So I feel like at the end of the day, it's paying off, you know? So, yeah. So are there like some formulas that you apply that lame men like cousins can get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, for, yeah, formulas, I would say engagement, you know? I, the formula I use and I know for engagement is um, you have to do this and this to be able to get this. So yeah. that's like mathematics. It's like plus two is four, right? Yeah. So like, if I if I tell people to go on Twitter right now and I tell people that I'm giving them something on Twitter, I will get engagement. So that's like the two plus two for me. I, so yeah. like it just helps me to be creative. And if I want to talk about two different stories, there's a way I know I can link them together because of the mathematical knowledge I have. You know, I can talk about something and then lead to another thing and then just, you know, blend it all together. Okay, you're taking me too far now. <laughs> <laughs> I just stay where I am uh, before, you know, you start be saying some hex times Y or so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's amazing how, how like, uh, things connect and not, no knowledge is waste you know, is a waste in, in real sense of it. So, but let's leave uh, the academic so people don't say we're too boring. And I know you got to go back to the studio. I'm keeping an eye on the time. going to try and do this for 15 minutes. Uh, so, dear viewers, it, it is very, it's a very scarce man we have today, so we have to manage yeah. time. So, please bear with us. So, let's quickly move to your, your you know, the main thing you're doing now, aside from the radio thing, which is this Afro hype thing. Yeah, yes. I can't speak to you without talking about that. So is your is your baby, is your concept. Please tell us yeah. more about it, uh, Shaya Banks. Yeah. Yeah. Afro hype is my baby, like you said. Thank you very much. Um it's it's something I started in 2019. Um mm. I've always been passionate about music like that. And in 2019, I was working, I started working on my album that is gonna come out very soon. I started working on it then and I needed to collaborate with artists and um work with like you know different talents but it, they were becoming too difficult to reach so mm -hmm. i was like you know what instead of reaching out to all these people how about i just go to the studio myself being that i'm a hype man let me just hype on this music and that was how i started something i didn't even know i was starting afro hype when i started it so i i went into the studio i did it i released the song shot the video at first, it was it started slow, and then it took me years later. I dropped a project of just Afro hype. Now, to explain what it means, it's like a hype man on any Afro beats sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's a combination of a hype man and a, and any Afro beat sound. It could be Afro pop, Afro EDM, Afro fusion. It could be anything. They call Afro beats in one word now. Which is a bit controversial, but we yeah. just leave that here to be in front you. So, so Afro hype is like hype man on any Afro beats. So yeah, it's a combination together. And to be honest, um, it has significantly grown in the past few months, or let me just say in the last one year, especially with the arrival of Ama Piano. Ama Piano has been able to give a lot of hype men the room to speak on songs in parties, in clubs at shows and it seems very cool 
And, you know, with the, with the arrival of Amapiano, we've seen the growth of TikTok during the pandemic. And when Amapiano and the hype man jumps on a song and then it goes on TikTok or a DJ mix, it becomes even more popular. So people are starting to accept it a little more. And, you know, it, it shows that there's potential and there's growth and there's room for growth for the sound. So I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful to have been able to, you know, create something that a lot of people, a lot of hype men are eating from now. A lot of them have, you know, jobs because of this genre. I, some of them reach out to me and they say oh, they're inspired by what I did. And, you know, it's just an amazing feeling. Wow, great. Well done. Um, Thank you. Do you uh, this movement, where do you sit uh, in five years' time? Um, yeah. I, I know it's going to be like one of the biggest genres in 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 terms of afro beats to the world i know that um hype music is something that has been underrated for a long time and i know that it's going to take a lot of us including me it will take us to the rest of the world we will tour events regularly shows that we have only artists headlining them you have hype men headlining those shows because wow. the genre you know so i know it's going to do a lot for for us it would help us to be able to structurally grow as a as an industry because for hype we are not even considered artists we are just considered like mcs we are just considered like regular people so how do you feel about that uh, type of uh, reaction from people um to be honest i feel like it's because they don't really appreciate it. They, they don't they, re they don't really understand the value of being a hype man that's why you know, they, they they treat us the way they do. And it's because we are not united. It's because we don't have a community yet. It's because it's a it's a budding industry. It's still growing. It's still very it's like it's like the way some some artists, some male artists see some female artists. Like they see them as just side of the industry. So that's the way they see us. The way the way the comedians have been able to grow a community, the way DJs have been able to grow a community hype men have not been able to grow that community. That's why we're struggling to get the acceptance, the value, like the the the, the reference that we deserve because we put in the most work. We are, yeah. we are starting the party, we are closing the party. In fact, because of what Afro Hype has even done, we've seen a lot of hype men in the UK, in the US, taking these things more seriously. They are getting more forms of payment because they know that a show without a hype man is a show that will just flop. Like, if there's no hype man, there's no party. Like, you know? see without sugar. Exactly. So, like, it, it's, it's very, very, um, it's very, very centric these days. And so, I know that in a few years from now, hype will become a very, very solid statement. Sure. I have no reason to doubt that. I really follow it in my only way. And I think it's an entertainment uh, genre on its own. And should be respected so but it's a question of time uh, and there's a, there ain't nothing going to stop that movement that's it that's for sure so uh i'll share uh banks i'd like to know uh about your or you know recently you've been in the uk uh for, for a tour all across the uk that was a big one for you how does it make you feel and what how did it go generally yeah you want to share uh, that with your friends? yeah yes i i also should have at least come to say hi to you, but I don't know if you are in London. Plenty, at plenty of time. You came for business this time around, so hopefully you come for leisure another time. So it's yes. it's excusable. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, it was it was amazing. Um, I was on the Afro Hype, uh, tour. Um, mm -hmm. I you know I went to a few cities, um, and you know it's 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 amazing to see how you know, African music is being accepted in the world, in, the, in in that part of the world right now. And it's a beautiful feeling. For me, it's like coming back after a long time to the UK it was a mixture of, you know, trying to, you know, get into the market and also, you know, just experiencing um, Afro beats years after in a different environment on a different scale, you know. So I, I'm so, I'm so excited that I was there. Um, it's, it, I was able to network with a few, you know, industry gatekeepers out there too. And it's, it's just a generally amazing feeling that, um, I would want to have, uh, pretty soon again. Yeah. 
And UK, historically, UK is uh, very important to you from your history that I've read. It says you got inspired here at a, a, an hospital radio, if I'm right, yeah? So uh, wh what do you feel about the UK generally being one of your, your, your roots in a way? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was so young then and... Um, yeah. Uh, was, Time was flies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, there was this hospital that um, I was going to see a relative. Uh, she was sick briefly mm -hmm. and she was in the hospital and went there. So, you know, I saw this guy, some, you know, British man. In, I don't want to sound racist, but he was British. And he was just talking. They had a community radio. He was announcing, saying all sort of stuff. And it was coming out of a radio set close by to, because I could see him through a window. Yeah. It just sounded very cool to me. And I went in there and I said, I, I want to do this. Like, how do you do it? And for me, it was... It was when I came back to Nigeria after learning, you know, all the softwares that were required to do this. There's, there's Audacity. I learned all, I, I went to YouTube to do a lot of research on this. And that was pretty much how he, he, he like, he took shape for me, you know. And coupled with the fact that I felt like, okay, if I did this and promote my artists together, you know, I mean, everything just came together. And for me, it's it's like the UK is a very important foundation for me as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a place that I feel like is second is second Lagos. London is like second Lagos. I know, I know. So they say, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think yeah, people like Felatu, they've got their roots in there. So uh, maybe it's just the way it is. <laughs> so London is a very important city for the arts as well. So it's somewhere something we're proud of <laughs> over here now. We, so the British uh, music industry, I know we're not there with like the Americans, but mm -hmm. we can't be, uh, you know, aside like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, we thank people like you, uh, the, your history connects over here. Okay, let's leave the, the UK. I'm, I know we're managing time. I'm just going to keep it to two more questions. And we'll, we'll wrap it up. So I, uh, recently I... Uh, there was a controversy about one of your men, your people in the industry, Kiss Daniel. So he wasn't going to take the flower. I think it was in Zimbabwe. Did you see that clip? And a lot of people describe him as arrogant and all that. It might say I have my reservations, but it's not for me to pass judgment as a journalist. So I put it to you uh, because you're one of his men. What uh, was responsible for that? Why did he react that way? Was it correct? Um... I wasn't in Zimbabwe. I only I wasn't. That was uh, Zambia. Yeah, I wasn't in Zambia when it happened. And to be honest, I don't know. Maybe he was having a bad day. He was having a. You know, we all have. We're human. We're all human, and we all have our flaws. And maybe he was genuinely having a bad day. And um, you know, there's show promoters who promise and fail. You know, there's terrible flighting and you know like if you're maybe you're supposed to take a six hour flight you end up taking a an 18 hour flight or 16 hour flight you know so we could all be having a bad day and it could happen at the end of the day he was able to you know make it make amends you know How? He, he he called the lady back and accepted oh. you know the flower and he didn't cut that on the, on the clips oh no um he he called her to dinner and then accepted the flower. Oh. Yeah, it's it's on clip. It's, it's oh. available. Okay. Uh, yes. So I'm sure people like you must have uh, done some uh, behind the scenes uh, talk, and it's clear you didn't really approve of the uh, momentary uh, situation. But I understand. I don't want you to judge him. It's your man. <laughs> but at least you've been we're, able we're to. All, we're, we're all flawed. We're all, all human. And we all have our, you know, our down times and the times where we are, you know, wrong. But, you know, I feel like at the end of the day, it's how we move on, how we proceed, how we make amends and how we deal with the consequences of our actions that really matter. You know, so I hope that, you know, it doesn't happen again. Like, subsequently, he's been, you know, seeing and embracing people more. So I think sometimes these things, we have to go through them to also teach us lessons to be able to interact with people better in the future. So, yeah. Yeah, I take it from you. We are all flawed human beings and we all just try to be better men. 
you know, yes. at the end of the day, after all is said and done. I see you've done uh, my last question because I've got to let you go to the studio now, even though I really wish to prolong this, but we have to understand the situation. And mm -hmm. I, I, I want to know, I see you uh, feature people like uh, Faz, the bad guy on your videos and all that. Who is your favorite Nigerian artist that you still yet to collab with and you really looking forward to doing that? Yes. Um, Ah, I mean, I have so many faves, so, but I have two major faves. I've collaborated with one, and it's coming out soon. Um, Buju, his name is Buju Benson. Yeah, I know he's, Buju, yeah. He's, a, he's an amazing talent, and he's on my <laughs> album. Well, you know, my album is coming out soon, so he, he's on my album. My other fave will be One Day Cool. I love One Day Cool. Good old One Day, one day Cool, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've from Mushin to Mo Hits, you know, to, to just all of everything when they call. When they call for me, is like he's goated. He's like the greatest of all time in my in my opinion. Uh, so I love collaboration with one they call, and um, yeah, that would that would really make my it will make my career if I'm gonna if I'm gonna you know put it that way. But I really love one they call. All right, great. So the last one for your fans. So why would let you just escape now again? <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me on the show. I mean, it's like I said, it's a big privilege. And um, I've looked up to you for the longest time. Uh -huh. and to, to see that we're in the same line of work means I'm doing something right, you know. And I really respect you so much. I want to say thank you. My regards to the family and the kid. And I want to say um, thank you to everyone that supports me that writes for me and people that, you know, always keep me going, my family, my friends, my loved ones, people that, my team, you know, people that just make sure that there's a share, banks, and people that actually are spreading the gospel of share, banks, and Afro hype and Viking. So I'm just thankful. All right. Great. We leave it here now, uh, dear fans and followers out there. Share, banks, you keep it locked and don't do what I wouldn't do. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Bye. Yeah.